We are Myth Vision. Welcome back to Myth Vision Podcast. Karen Della Carrier is joining us again today. She went to the top and she still hasn't stopped. You like how I rhymed it? Anyway, uh, you guys do not want to miss this story. I'm telling you, Karen has, she called me and said, look, I've got a few things you absolutely must hear about the Church of Scientology. And you know, I want to expose the cults for the dirt that they carry. I want to show people why these are harmful, why you don't want to become a Scientologist or go into these superstitious, strange, weird cults that want to control your life and milk your money. So Karen, you knew everyone you knew everything and that's not an exaggeration meaning you just you had your hands there your eyes were on it you were on the boat there with l ron hubbard i always point this out and you're going to tell us some crazy story again today please educate us this is the story of how scientology likes to use the government to do dirty work it wants to use the government to arrest you. Mm. Although they fan the flames and lie, manufacture, whatever, set you up. I told you in an earlier video, if you didn't see, they were trying to set me up for child trafficking, sex trafficking. Mm. They, wanted, they wanted me frazzed and agitated with the FBI coming to my door to try, of course, the FBI, as soon as they heard it's the cult of Scientology. They knew, they knew their shenanigans, so that was, but this is a story of a guy called John Nelson. John Nelson quickly rose up the ranks. He was a young guy, very smart, very reliable, very honest. And he rose up and was posted in a very high position called commanding officer CMO INT. INT is short for international. International simply means the hierarchy of the base, the, the group that manage all of Scientology internationally, so at the pinnacle. And he fled. He couldn't stand it and he blew. That's the Scientology jargon for flee. Escaping is known as a blow. You blow out of there. Oh, he blew. <gasps> she was plotting to blow. Blow means escape. I, I just want to point out, as you continue the story, just to say, it isn't normal when an organization has a term <laughs> like blow as like a thing. Like, you guys, he blew too. Like, if people are blowing, <laughs> there's a problem. Just so you know. <laughs> That's so perfect. You know, the second in command, Marty Rathburn, said that David Miscavige every morning, every morning, asked two questions when he woke up from sleep. First thing, every morning, who blew in the last 24 hours? That was a standard question, who blew? What's the latest flap? Those were the two questions. But you see, he expected to be told of who blew in the last 24 hours. That was, it's, it's blowing and leaving the group is an expectation, not a surprise. I mean, can you imagine if a Pope woke up every, Saturday, every Sunday morning and came before the bishops and the cardinals and stuff and said, all right, which priest committed homosexual tendencies this day? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like which priest messed with a child or something, right? Which we know that's been an issue that's happened in, in the Catholic church, right? But I'm saying, I doubt the Pope is going every Sunday morning saying, all right, so um, are there any, like, tell me the latest of that. Like, no, and every day that tells you there's a problem, a serious problem. People are trying to get out, but they don't know anything else. They have such vested interest in it too. They're so stuck in their entire lives. I mean, I see why people feel like it's easier to keep going than it is to turn away. And, and But if it's so bad that they can't just keep going, oh my, how bad does it have to get? So anyway, I'm sorry. I just... Uh, uh. We have a policy that if you blow, you're automatically declared a suppressive person. 
which is they name you as a criminal anti-social personality because you escaped, just right. because you fled without authorization. And you know, boy, I think you interviewed Ron Miscavige, the yeah. father of David Miscavige. He had to plot for six months. He had to make it a military precise strike operation to get out of there. Mm. It was six months of planning. Like, <laughs> it's not easy to blow their security guards. As soon as they hear you want to leave, you're put in a further lockdown of a lockdown. You're imprisoned. You are completely, because now they've lost trust that you're with the program. You're asking to leave. You're borderline enemy. You're a shade of, asking to leave makes you enemy. You can walk in and out even off spin-offs of Christianity, Presbyterian Church and Methodist, you can walk in and out yep. of the world, no? Yeah. When, when you left your... I could your, leave when I wanted to, yes. Even though there were cult tendencies, but it was more psychological and not, there wasn't more of a physical, it was more psychological. Um, yes, I could walk out and I did not have... The repercussion I had was eventually getting a letter that I was excommunicated. I didn't have to worry about looking over my shoulder. None of this stuff that you're talking about here. And this guy, it seems like his honesty, and I mean, I don't know him, but it seems like the way you described this guy's honesty and his being a virtuous man is probably what led him to blow to begin with. He probably saw the crap that they're doing and finally said, I'm done. I can't. Th that's not who I am. I'm out. And he runs. What happens when he runs? Nice analysis. That was good what you said. I hope John Nelson gets to view this sometime. One little piece of data, because we're educating viewers. We like to educate you. One piece of data is that the cult of Scientology evolved something called blow drill. Blow drill means posses, gangs of Sea Hawk members go after pursuit to kidnap the person, hold them back, put them in a van and drag them back in. That's an absolute standard thing which ran for 25 years. I don't know if they still do it now. It's called blow drill. And the drill is immediately someone's missing. Every single confessional all their personnel files, their ethics files, everything is searched to see where they could have gone. Have they been in touch with their mother? Do they talk of friendship and family? They, they itemize every location and possible connection that you would flee to. Most people do flee to family. Mm. So they've got all these, they look up the addresses, they research, and bosses of people go after, in pursuit, acting like federal marshals. They act like they have the authority to take you back into custody. They did it for twice, and many people were dragged. But the hilarious thing is, while these bosses were allowed freedom to go kidnap someone back, some of them blew. Oh my, no, no. <laughs> this was their freedom. They were not being, because they were given full leeway to go kidnap this person back. So while they were off to kidnap someone back, they also fled. I love this, by the way. This is wonderful. This is the party, the party thing. Okay, so John Nelson. He not only flees, he goes to a spin-off group in Santa Barbara run by David Mayo, the arch enemy of David Miscavige. Now, was he somebody big up in the organization before and then David takes power and he's out, but he's still practicing Scientology? Well, a different version of Scientology. Right. Without the brutality, without the ethics, without the this and the that. He Got it a gentler form. So 
yes. David Mayo was a hero of mine. He he mentored me. He was just one of those good guys. Even though he was in, he was mm -hmm. a good man. Right. And so now, John Nelson is working for David Mayo, the arch enemy of David Miscavige. So a plot is brewed. A plan is done. Oh, my. To take out John Nelson wants to just destroy John Nelson. Even worse than destroy. This was a homicide hit that was plotted. Let me tell you how it was arranged. Okay. The cult of Scientology hire a law firm. They got lots of law firms. But it's the law firm that hires a private investigator. The private investigator hires a dirty private investigator. And the dirty private investigator can hire one of his buddies who's really, really dirty. So the cult of Scientology has levels of cutaway. They, they didn't do any. All they did was hire a law firm. This is this is the, it's it's almost like mafia gangsters that order a whack. They're sitting in Miami at dinner when the whack occurs. If the FBI wants to see where were you when that homicide, they were sitting in a dinner of twelve people. They mm -hmm. had a perfect alibi. They were nowhere near. How did the math? How did it go? The boss ordered his captain, who ordered the next guy in the next level. Blah, blah, blah. So they have their hands were nowhere near the target. They simply ordered the whack. That's the way it works in the mafia. So Scientology, John Nelson was doing business in the Far East. There was a little debate whether it was Hong Kong or Singapore. I thought it was Singapore. In that country, if you're a heroin dealer, you are executed. Mm. I want to send you a couple of pictures where at the airport it says, if you traffic in heroin, you will be executed. Instead of saying, welcome to Singapore or welcome to our city, it threatens that they must have had so many dealers. You will be executed. They announced right there in big signs, I'll send you a couple of pictures, right at the airport, you will be killed. If you've come in here to sell drugs, you will be killed. So, with all the cutaways, a private investigator was hired, a dirty one, a really dirty one, who would plant pounds of heroin in John Nelson's hotel room. And then, of course, the government would be tipped off. Go look in his hotel room. And then he would be executed by the Singapore government. Do you see how Scientology's hands... Oh, my... They manipulated it. They formulated it. Uh, like, I can't help but have to ask, like, how can he even get out of that? How could you possibly get out of that unless they knew it wasn't him? I can't okay. imagine him making it out of there alive or at least getting off without 20, 30 years locked away at the very least. Oh, my I gosh. The story is told in a book called Expert Witness, uh, an anti-Scientology or Scientology book. And there's a chapter in it describing this, this thing this John Nelson hit to be executed by the local government. Scientology has never challenged this book. Scientology never tried to get a restraining order on the publication. This book is in publication called Expert Witness by Jesse Prince. The story is covered there. I'm telling you, I'm telling it to you in a live version because two dearest friends of mine who were on the Apollo with me Commodore Messengers saw the documents on this hit live with their own eyes. From the 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 from Scientology's organization, they saw the hit. 
they saw the program and the orders and what I think they saw it after the fact, but they saw the documents that this all was dreamt up within Scientology hierarchy. Now, the, pri the dirty, dirty private investigator pulled out and aborted at the last moment. He was willing to be dirty. He was willing to funnel money and maybe, you know, beat up someone and break their legs in a dark parking lot. He, 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 would, he was willing to do a few things. Yeah. But he didn't want on his conscience maybe the ghost of John Nelson following because he killed. He didn't want to. He just didn't want to do a homicide because essentially... It was, if the, no question, and the government was fast in Singapore. There's not this twenty years of appeals, and you know the Supreme Court, and uh, you know a person on death row has twenty years of appeals in the United States. They're not like that in these countries. Right. Death sentence, go there, shot, boom, you're dead. So the the. The PI pulled out and aborted it. And John Nelson, who never knew any of this was going on, is alive to this day because the hit was aborted at the last moment. And they didn't then start it all over again trying to do away with him. But I'm telling you this story because it shows how dark and how evil Scientology hierarchy is in its highest ranks. I don't think it compares with some of these religious yeah. religions that you interview so so well. Uh, I don't. Yeah, think there's this is a different know. level. This is a different level. Um, so when he when he aborted the mission. Can you tell us what happened? Like, how did that happen? Did he say, hey, look, I, I put this here. Did he confess? And did he tell the government, like, look, don't do that. It, it, it was me that put it in. Like, what happened? No, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't plant the drugs. Oh, how did they, how do we know he about aborted, this? Then? He aborted. He aborted. Uh, aborted means he didn't carry out his instructions to go plant the heroin because his conscience right. made him feel, look, I'm willing to be reckless and do a few things, but I'm not going to cause the death right. of an innocent guy by planting heroin. So, so then the back at the last moment. How do we know that, like, if I'm going to be a skeptic, right, just for a moment to try and, like, prod back, like, how do we know since he didn't do it, how do we know he was going to? Like, wh did he say something or did someone know this and say something about it? Like, how do we know this story, so to speak? Does that make sense? Well, I know the story because, as I just told you, two messengers who were with Howard and were right in high ranks saw the story in real time in the cult documents because they were senior enough to have availability to read all this. Uh, I don't think they, they, they're good people. They, they wouldn't have read it while the operation was going forward. I don't think they would have allowed a death to happen. But after it was pulled, they read the documents on this in the <laughs> church hierarchy and they were and we discussed it back and forth oh my gosh how devious and how evil this could be you know many years ago in the late 1980s a girl in portland oregon won a thirty thousand dollar judgment against the cult. The cult just went ballistic because she wasn't harmed. She said, well, the church had promised her all these things and she didn't get the gain. And anyway, 
It was a $30,000 judgment. My husband, Heber Jench, was sitting with church hierarchy in a row. Now, this was the top brass, say, seven or eight of the absolute top brass of the church. L. Ron Hubbard. I mean, like the top people, right? Yeah. No, H Hubbard, wasn't, Hubbard was in hiding. Oh, okay, okay. okay. But the top brass, everyone below Hubbard, about seven or eight people. And a guy called Mike Sutter piped up. And he said, if anyone wants me to get rid of her, Speak up, I'm willing to do it. And there was pin drop silence. I'm telling you this because you would think that people would have said, what? Are you out of your head? We're a church. We don't go bumping off people. We don't, we don't, we're not killers. Nobody said a word. Pin drop silence though Mike Sutter was volunteering himself as an assassin and nobody said a word. Wow. Oh my. <laughs> you know, you lift up the curtains. Yeah. I want to, I really want to focus on the degree of evil. Yeah. I really want to, and also the cover up of it because it's covered up. My boy, who was dead at 27 years old because of the cult, at 12 years old was having full-blown sexual intercourse with a 40-year-old woman called Marie Warren in Clearwater. Oh, you know what? That's another <laughs> whole story. Oh, oh my gosh. I was just a teaser. What happened when my son, 12 years old, never reported to Clearwater PD? No. He was having sex at 12 years old. As soon as I stepped out of the church, people wrote to me, Karen, did you know that? No, I mustn't get into a new story. Yeah. This is the story of John Nelson, who worked for years, morning, noon, and night, 60 hour weeks, 70 hour weeks, working for the cult. And because he left the hierarchy of the church, were organizing a hit. Don't you see the cult as a kind of mafia religion? Wow. Who carries on like this? Talk to me, Derek. Who carries No on? one. I don't know. I, I I can't really think. I mean, maybe the initial, I would think, initial Joseph Smith movement back in the 1830s. Oh, uh, yeah. There, there's some people who say yeah. that it was mob like he had some hitmen wow. that were on his team. He had a death squad that would help kill people that he opposed. Wow. We're talking about 1830s when people were in the wild, wild west pulling guns on each other. Here we're in 20, you know, 2000s, and this crap's going on in a church. Um, it's like that's just crazy. Like, no one's doing that today that I know of. I don't see that, at least. Uh, if there's something I'm missing, comment down below. Let us know. If yeah. you know of anything crazier than this when it comes to cults, I really am interested in seeing your comments down below and what you have to say. Please show support, like this video, share this content, let other people know to stay away from Scientology. And for that matter, any cult, any cult. But Karen... You are full of stories. I cannot wait to get more of these for the audience. I'm serious. There's some deep stuff that you've learned, you've found out, that you've lived through, and also your current husband today. You know, oh, he yeah. is full of like realizing there's some dirt going on the papers, the money, taxes, the whole nine. Like, just you, I really appreciate this. I seriously do. Would is there anything else you'd like to say? Well, I want to tell you, if you've come this far in the video, you are our audience. Stay with the channel. Let us participate together. Let's grow together. Let's learn and educate ourselves. Because every decision you make going forward in your life, 
is based on the knowledge and data points you get as you move forward in time. So get the data, get as much data as you can from this channel because it's not, I mean, some things are breathtaking, but above all, it's educational. Gain a little bit of extra knowledge you didn't have half an hour ago. Yeah. Please do. Thank you so much, Karen. You rock. Yes. I want to talk about what's going on in court right now with the celebrities and all that stuff. We've got stuff we could talk about for sure. So. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.